Okay, let's look at graphs of, of equilibrium. And here we're going to use a reaction as an example just for you to see how the graphs work. And it's just so you get an idea of the shapes. Once again, as with everything, the more you do, the better it is to understand these, okay? So, when we look at the graphs for the start of the reaction, now what this reaction is, is we're looking at 2NO2 becoming N2O4, okay? At the beginning, the forward reaction is high, reverse reaction is low, they eventually meet, equilibrium is reached, okay? We've seen these graphs before. This is, this is easy. It's not difficult to understand where we're going with this. When we look at the concentrations, please don't worry about the values, but what I do want you to do, let's just change this to concentration because it's going to be easier or instead of number of moles. So we look at concentration, and now the issue here is the N204 was the product, the NO2 was the reactant so we started with no product and eventually we get some we started with lots of reactants and we use it up at t1 that point that's where we reached equilibrium how do we know we reached equilibrium because the concentrations remained constant so we reach an equilibrium and then we disturb the equilibrium just like we did in the last, last section where we said maybe we change temperature or we change concentration or we change pressure. But really, it's going to be about how we know that we did that, okay? Because that's very, very important. So, if we increase the concentration of something, and in this case, we are looking at increasing the concentration, say, of the NO2. There's a spike in one of the reaction rates, okay, because the forward reaction is higher, I know that the forward reaction was favored, which means I'm going to use up reactants and I'm going to make product, okay, I'm going to use up reactants and I'm going to make product, so the product has to get bigger, has to come up to it. How do I know that it was a reactant that I actually increased? Because there's a spike on the reactant line. Okay, so we had a concentration of the NO2 and then all of a sudden it jumps. The only way it can do that is because I added more in. By adding more in, what happens is it needs to use it up and then as well we make more of the product. So we end up with more product. Again, it reaches an equilibrium. Very important, okay? But what if we took, if we decreased the concentration? Okay, so now let's see what we've done here. Now we're decreasing the concentration. First of all, when I look at what's happened here, the reverse reaction has been favored, okay, because it's got the foster rate at, this is the disturbance, it still has the foster rate. So I favored the reverse reaction and the forward reaction has to catch up, okay? When we look at the reaction at the concentration graph, now I can see it was the reactant that I took away because there's a spike and then it's trying to make more, but the NO2 has to, de N204 decreases because I favored the reverse reaction, so I'm favoring making reactants and not products okay what about if we increase pressure so we look at the graph now this looks like concentration right so for now what by increasing the pressure i know i favored the forward reaction and actually i can see that because that's n204 there's only one molecule on the right two on the left increase in pressure goes to the side of the reaction with the least number of particles all right but how do I see it on a concentration graph well look here I increased the pressure increasing the pressure will increase both concentrations because I changed the volume but the N2O4 volume concentration increased more than the NO2 why 
because I favoured making the N204. The N02 had no choice but to increase because I decreased the volume. Okay, so it has to get bigger. It's a gas. But I favoured making the product because there's a bigger increase in the product. Okay, what if I decrease the pressure? Well, once again, I can see reverse reaction is favoured. Okay, but how do I see it on the graph? Both concentrations decrease. But the NO2 decreases more. Why? Because I'm making NO2. So we don't see it as much. So I'm using up the N2O4. Okay. And by using up the N2O4, it means I'm favoring making the NO2. Fairly straightforward. Okay. Now here, I've got a temperature issue. So look here. Both increase in rate. When I get to the end, the rate is faster. I favored the reverse reaction, okay, so we can pretty much assume that the reverse reaction was um, exothermic, okay, now we look, now the difference is here, both of them change, okay, the one, the products get smaller, the reactants get bigger, but I said over here, I was favoring the reverse reaction, I must end up with more reactant, okay, less product, straightforward. If I decrease the temperature, get smaller, when I reach equilibrium, lower rate. I favored the forward reaction by decreasing the temperature, so that means, oh, I said, I think I said the reverse reaction was exothermic just now. I lied, it's endothermic. By decreasing the temperature, I favored the forward reaction, which means the forward reaction must be exothermic because a decreasing temperature favors the forward reaction favors the exothermic reaction. So what happens? I make lots of product and I use up my reactant, but they are gentle changes. There are no spikes. Okay. Then we get to a catalyst. Now what happens with a catalyst? And this is quite an easy one to see. Increasing rate, both rates end. Nothing will happen to the concentrations. Concentrations will not change because they are not affected by a catalyst. We will just simply reach equilibrium faster. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here we have N2 and H2 placed into a container. They're allowed to react until equilibrium is reached. Blah, 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 all the rest of it. At 10 seconds, okay, equilibrium has been reached for the first time. At 20 seconds, we disturbed the equilibrium. Now, if you look at it, it's the N2 that spiked. So, in other words, I put in N2, and I can see that because then the N2 starts to get lower again. The H2 gets lower, so I'm using up my reactants, and I make more product. And then it reaches a new equilibrium at 30. First question, describe what happens at 10 seconds. Well, what did we just say? The system has reached equilibrium. Okay, how do I know? Because the concentrations in the reactants and products remains constant. Explain. Describe. Reaches equilibrium. Explain. Why? Because the rate of the concentrations remain constant. Then they say, give an explanation for the change that occurs at 20 seconds. The concentration of the N2 was increased. According to the shuttle, so there's, and there's a graph. According to what happens here, okay, so this is 20. What happens? The concentration of the N2 was increased. According to the shuttle, yes, the system is, will change to decrease the concentration of the N2. Forward reaction is favored, so the N2 and the H2 decrease, and the NH3 will increase until 30 seconds where the equilibrium is re-established okay now at this juncture you need to do the next exercise the next activity so if you look in the notes that you've got there's i know there's a, a, a question c and d here we will come back to that one because we need to do the equilibrium constant if you've already done the equilibrium constant before you did this i don't know how that works then you can go straight to c and d but we need to do the constant first 
and then we can look at question C and D. But you can now do the activity from your textbook, which is, and I can't remember what it is right now. And of course, you've got the worksheet. Okay.